So I grew up on the south side of Chicago um, with my parents and four of my sisters. And so seven of us in the house, our, our entire social network was African American with the exception of a few teachers here or there, but we went to church with African American school. I mean, there was really no meaningful interactions with people outside of the African American community. Um, there was a lot of stuff going on in the neighborhood. There was a criminal element. There was some sort of dangerous components. Before my parents came to know the Lord, they, they ran the streets. They were career criminals. And so when they came to faith, they still had a lot of respect from the people that they used to know from the neighborhood. And my father would always say to me, he would say, son, my, my testimony is that God rescued me from all these things. He said, my prayer for you is that God would keep you from these things. I grew up in Urbana, Illinois, and I grew up in a Christian home. I went to Christian school. As I consider my upbringing, though, even though there was diversity in Champaign-Urbana, I lived a very white life. The idea of the Holy Spirit ministry was pretty strange to me, and I remember just um, attending the Vineyard Church for the first time in college and just seeing people like really worship Jesus and it made me really uncomfortable. I moved to Urbana, Illinois in 1999 to go to the University of Illinois. And so I was moving from very homogeneous South Side neighborhood of Chicago to a very white Champaign, Urbana. Like very, very white Champaign, Urbana. And so it wasn't until um, I had graduated college, I was serving in the, in the vineyard. I was, I think I was working in TV at the time. Um, that I felt um, a call to, to be a church planter. And uh, having grown up in Urbana, I was not, um, I was familiar with the Urbana Vineyard, but I was not comfortable with the Urbana Vineyard. They seemed um, odd and strange. I actually grew up in a Lutheran church and uh, was a member of a, of a Christian church when I came back from college. But then when I met Gino, uh, I realized that Gino wasn't strange. And so maybe I could give the, the vineyard a shot. All the churches that I was interacting with um, had one thing in common. They were pretty homogeneous and that nobody really seemed to, nobody really seemed to be bothered by that. I mean, people were talking about it. They were verbally um, expressing concern about it, but like there was nobody really doing anything to cultivate um, a multi-ethnic uh, community within these churches. I just felt that the Lord said to me um, uh, very clearly, it wasn't an audible voice, but I just felt like the Lord said, hey, when you, when you build your church, uh, just make sure it's not that way. I would just sort of begin to dream about that and uh, talk, I began to talk to my wife about that and talk to other people about that. And it became something that was just kind of like this fleeting idea or this sort of distant uh, command that the Lord whispers to you to start walking in that direction and it actually became to uh, it started to turn into something that was like man this could happen. We're glad that you joined us tonight if you're a first time but I guess it's everybody's first time right? When you come to our church you will see people of different ethnicities preaching and worship leading and directing kids church and welcoming you at the front door, as well as people of different ethnicities sitting around the table making leadership decisions. And if you come to our church on Sunday morning, you'll see a lot of different faces that represent different walks of life, different cultural groups doing stuff. And so by the time you get to your seat, you will probably interact with a lot of different people. But we just really value what God is, uh, God's bigger family. But we're learning about God and we're learning about other people. We're actually learning about God's goodness and His depth through seeing the, the different types of people that He's created. If I hadn't joined into this vision with Jesus and if I hadn't connected my life with Geno's, I probably would not be experiencing any of this. I probably would still live a very white life in a very white community. Um, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't know all of the stuff that I know I, because I said yes to Jesus and because I said yes to being a part of this crazy church planting life. <laughs>